Hi, this is Todd Gentile from Syncor Systems. Okay, this screencast is on doing remote debugging, and the first thing you're going to need are the remote debugging tools that um, go on your remote computer. So if you've got Visual Studio installed, this is Visual Studio 2008 um, under Program Files, Microsoft Visual Studio, Common 7, IDE, Remote Debugger. There's a 64-bit version and an 86, uh, so a 32-bit version of the tools. So you can um, copy these over to your remote computer. And they're also available as a download. Um, probably the easiest way to get there is just search for Studio 2008 Service Pack Debugger. Hit that, and this first link will take you to the site. And you can download, I assume that's a 19 AM version, 64, and a 32 bit version. And you can install those. So let's just switch over to the remote computer. So here's the remote computer. and. Um, when I did the install from the website, um, you just end up with uh, programs, Microsoft Visual Studio tools, and there's the debugger. And I just made a shortcut, put it on my desktop, and you can just double click this, and now you're ready to go. Um, the remote debug monitor is running. Now, depending on how you're going to debug, if you're doing just a straight, say, um, unmanaged application, all um, Visual C, Win32 type code, like a Win32 console app, no CLR at all, no mixed code. You can go in here into options and you can say, okay, no authentication, allow any user, and that kind of makes some things simpler. But if you're doing any managed code, you cannot do that. So, what I found is I created an account on the remote computer that's got the same name and password as the account I'm using on my host computer that has Visual Studio installed. And then it ends up giving it a server name of um, the account name and then the computer name, just like that. So, and it shows you that that's there. Okay, so then you, um, I typically will, let's go back to the host computer. On the host computer, I'll typically go to wherever I'm building my app and the release, and I'll create a, a shared folder on the remote computer and I'll bring that up here as well and um, so here's the drop folder and the computer's called the EPC so you can see it's just a go here it's just a, a shared folder on the network and then I just come here and then once I once I've done a build in Visual Studio um, I just grab the oops, sorry I just grab the release build seems to be a problem running um, close this window too seems to be a problem running debug builds on computers that don't have Visual Studio 2008 installed or maybe just not a uh, problem running them on any different computer than where they were built so you just um, grab the files here so come to your release folder where everything's built select them hit copy come over to your shared folder go to where you want to put them and paste them in there then using remote desktop you can switch back over open that folder up there's my drop folder and I put it right here and make this a little bit smaller because my screencast window is fairly small and then launch your app over here on the remote computer first Okay, so now it's up and running. Now I'm going to switch back to my host computer and let's go to Visual Studio. I'm going to bring that up here. And now there's a couple things you can do. Um, I think there are two of them are equivalent. This is attached to process and then debug attached to process. You could come in here and since you're in authenticated mode, you're going to leave this as default. If you were in the non authenticated mode, you would go remote nat native only with no authentication. If you do this, then all you need here is the name of the computer, this EPC. This, this is one with the port. That will work also, but you really only need this one. And once you do that, you click Refresh. You'll see all the processes running over there, and then you'll click Attach. But we have mixed code, so we're going to say Default. It's looking at my home computer here, and I want it to go. And if this wasn't in your list, you would just type it. So you type that name that you logged on with and the remote computer name and then it automatically did a refresh and then we can see here's the testbed app.exe right there 
and you can click attach to that and it will go and I'm not going to do it because it's slightly easier way once you've got it set up anyway is you go into properties come down to the debugging tab and in the remote command put the path to that exe in here um, the working directory is the directory let's say where your project file is on your host computer so this is the local computer here and I have this under this path and then you put the remote server name in here you say connection remote with Windows authentication you say auto because you're doing mixed mode um, debugging and you change attached to yes and then that's all done now when you're ready to debug you can just hit the go just like you could with a local program so it's up and running we haven't hit any breakpoints but now it's up and running it's loading the symbol files you saw this kind of go blank and then the symbol files loaded and if your symbol files don't load you can um, right click here on your application and get some symbol load information it kind of shows you where it's looked for the files and if you don't have the symbol set you can hit the quick way to get to that that's this is just a quick shortcut that's taking you to the tools options debugging symbols and if you need to you can put a path directly in and at one point I'd done that and I don't know if it remembers this but anyway it once it's done now it's gone but it seems to remember where I put them um, and uh, the other things is sometimes when you're doing this there are some uh, simple settings there's some ways to just force load but this is what you want to play with and get the settings and so if they don't show up again the other way in here is tools options debugging symbols and put a symbol path in and you can say load symbols using the above locations and I don't know anything about using symbol servers okay so once that's done so we're up and running let's switch back to the uh, remote desktop computer and I've got a breakpoint set when this button's clicked. So let me move this window over a little bit so we can see Visual Studio. And when I hit open, boop, there we go. We've hit the breakpoint. So now I can stay in Visual Studio. I've got various breakpoints set. I can I can hit go again, and it'll just go and run to my next breakpoint. And you can, uh, well, we probably don't want to see this window anymore, you know, but you can look at your locals and your variables and things like that, just like you could if you were debugging locally. And that's pretty much it. There, there was one other thing, and I'll go over the, I think, uh, two of the most common problems when you're trying to do remote debugging. One is the, your breakpoints turn hollow, and then there's a warning icon. And um, one message you might see hover over these to see the when the warning icon is there, and it'll give you the error message. One will be the symbols weren't loaded, and that's why you use um, debug, windows, and you come to modules. That was the original window I had that kind of shows you that symbols are loaded. The other problem you get is that the symbols are loaded, but it says there's no executable code associated with this. And uh, for me, that was because I was connecting in a non-authenticated mode and saying native only, and I had a mixed mode app. So that's those two. And then once I had everything kind of set up with authenticated, I still was getting a warning, but it gave me a very helpful error message about um, I had just my code enabled, so that was under this same area, tools, options, um, debugging, and then out of all these checkboxes, this enabled just my code, managed only. Um, oh, it's interesting that you check now. I actually had to clear this to um, get things working earlier, so that's something to look out for, too. I'm not sure why that re-enabled and why it's working now, but... Um, if it says anything about enable just my code and I'm checking it, this is what they were, or they want you to come and do things. So typically I go till I don't have a breakpoint, but let's uh, see what happens here. If I just say debug, stop debugging, and then let's switch back over. Okay, well, it killed the app on this side, um, which kind of makes sense because it was sort of left in a hung state then. Um, so normally I finish debugging and then when I detach the app is still up and running over here on my remote computer.